The reason that we need to do our contracts first is because every proposal you send will be able to have a contract and an invoice attached, just like this one. So we can go directly from proposal to contract to invoice in one step, and your clients will be able to go through all three steps without you having to do anything, which is amazing. So we wanna make sure we get that contract set up first. In our template section, we'll return to forms and contracts are their own type of forms. Just how lead captures were their own type of forms, contracts are going to require a legally binding signature field on the bottom and they'll also require a counter signature. So as an example, we'll have a client signature field and then we also will have a business owner signature field on each different type of contract. Sub agreements, which are next to contracts in your form section are going to require a signature field, but it only has to come from the client. You don't have to countersign it. I like to use a subcontract as my design proof for wedding invitations because that way the client can legally sign off on everything that's on the proof before we go to print. If you are also a designer who uses client proofs, I have a whole video that I'll link below this one all about how I build out those design proofs. So back to contracts. These are the ones I have on my live account and you can see I have a few different things. We have an agreement for assistance, a calligraphy, a day of contract, an invitation contract, licensing agreement, a joint purchasing agreement for when I purchase some equipment with a friend and a few other things here. So you can have a lot of different contracts and use them for any type of job. I'll show you my invitation contract. All of the different elements and containers that we showed you in lead capture are also available here in contract building as well. So you can make them as customized as you want. I'd advise for a contract to keep it fairly simple. Of course, add, you know, your logo and branding and some of those smart fields, but I, I wouldn't necessarily add anything too fancy or flashy visually. And then at the bottom, they will all automatically have the signature fields for both of you. So there's not a whole lot you can really do to that, but you can edit it a little bit um, and change the text as needed. You'll see initials field and signature field, which are grayed out on some of the other form types. Uh, so you can use those. For instance, I'm going to use a, an initials field right here, and I'll just put in some custom text like, woo, one down, only 627 to go. Just kidding. It's only a few more. Um, and then I have a few things where I kind of say, I read and understand this and can't wait to submit my 50% retainer just as a reminder to of what they are signing off on. And then like this part is especially important. Please autograph twice. So I draw a little extra attention to some of those uh, sections that are especially important. At the end of the contract, I'm going to ask for a little bit of extra information that's just helpful for me as an invitation designer. So their venue, their wedding planner, their photographer, these help me make connections within the wedding industry and just give me a little extra information about this client. If you try to use a contract without both these signature fields in it, it is going to give you an error at some point. So I'd recommend just making sure you include both of those. On the sub agreements, um, those are more optional and you can use the signature or initial fields and you don't have to do a counter signature. Here in form settings, there's not too many different options. You can add a completion alert here. Mine are always sandwiched between like the proposal and the invoice, so I don't really pay a ton of attention to this, but just in case you're gonna send it over uh, by itself or you have a contract that is not going to be sent as part of a proposal, you might want to customize this. Now this part has nothing to do with Dubsado, but just as a business owner, I recommend having a contract with 100% of your jobs once you're accepting money for your work. You need a contract in place as it will protect both you and the client in case things get a little bit messy. And I just absolutely love referring, you know, per the contract and updating my contract every year in case there's any like gray area situations that occur throughout the year that I haven't fully covered. I love kind of adding those things into my contract so that they are covering me in the future. If you don't have a contract for your creative business yet, I'll link two of my favorite places to get them with discount codes in the description of this video. Now, if you remember, we have proposal, contract, and invoice. So next up, I'm going to show you how to create the invoices in Dubsado so we start to get all three of these pieces connected.